Hello, um, I'd like to talk about Haruki Murakami's book. Um, I think uh, in the past I many many times uh, talked about him uh, because uh, uh, he is the first one I, uh, uh, I got into the reading books. Uh, before then I, I, I was so busy and I didn't have time to read books or anything. So, um, Haruki Murakami, and I didn't know him that much, and I, I talked about it before too, uh, but uh, um, I knew that he was very popular in Japan, and uh, um, I uh, was watching this YouTuber, uh, probably that's 1990s to 2000, maybe 2000, 2010, uh, no, no, 2005 or 6 or 7 or something around that time. This YouTuber, young YouTuber, 18 years old, a high school kid, uh, came to Japan and experienced the first, um, you know, anime country, right? And so I, I, at that time, I was very, very hungry for news from Japan and so forth. So I was looking for um, the YouTube's uh, video and the news from the internet as much as possible. And uh, uh, he was he was very good. Uh, his name is Roger Swan, and uh, uh, first one is called Tokyo Swan. That's a long title. And he talked about you know the Japanese horror films. Uh, he's an expert in Japanese horror film. But anyway, he uh, he said uh, the most favorite author is the Haruki Murakami. Uh, well, why you know you know if he likes that and why I don't know about much about him. So I started to read and immediately I was taken. And uh, the reason that why I was taken is that uh, uh, the most of, of his books, he, uh, he narrates, I think the, this protagonist narrates the book and you know he's about 30-ish or 40-ish or, or maybe 50-ish sometime the uh, the lonely man uh, mostly the wife went away or you know whatever and so he's he's getting to like a philosophical state and he meets uh, different peoples and their so forth the other people in the book is also kind of a peculiar uh, in a way that uh, he describe it um, more or less like a, uh, the person can be a uh, loner as well and or handicapped or something strange uh, characteristic uh, uh, the other people have but uh, regardless he kind of uh, drawn to this particular uh, people and uh, establish kind of relationships and uh, uh, the story uh, always goes like a very, very, um, uh, I would say, uh, very lonely and uh, uh, strange atmosphere. And uh, so when I read the book, you don't know what's going to happen and uh, why he's there. But during that course of the story, there's the bits and pieces of uh, side stories and that's very fascinating he talks about something that happened and for a short time like a short story type of thing in a story and uh, that particular short story in the story very fascinating very you know wow yeah you feel like that's a major part of the whole fiction you know <laughs> so um, uh, that's I, I like and uh, also, um, I think uh, he is, he, he's a Japanese writer, right? And he was born 1949, I think. And I'm, I'm, I was born 1948. And um, very contemporary. And he, he lived in Tokyo and I lived in Tokyo at the same time, 1970s. And um, so his experience, and my experience is very similar as well. And uh, um, his hobbies, I kind of identify 
you know, he, he, he loves a different type of thing, like a jazz, instrumental jazz he liked. I didn't have any interest in that, although I try to listen to the Miles Davis and the Sophos. But uh, um, I, I never got into I love the jazz vocal. By the way, you know, Ella Fitzgerald and uh, Sinatra, you know, all these great artists, Sarah Bourne. Uh, so, but, you know, the experience is very, very same. I think he goes to, he collect those LP at the time, right? And uh, I was collecting LPs, uh, the used LPs and so forth. Uh, so, um, it's, a, it's a, you know, that his similarity, but I think most of all, I think uh, his writing is, um, how can I describe it? It's, it's very different from the other Japanese writer, uh, very sh short sentences and uh, uh, he describes things as a matter of fact. He doesn't go into deep in a, a you know, detailed description, although he writes about uh, um, something like a trivial thing, like a cooking and what he prepares, the food and so forth. And uh, that's fascinating, by the way. And so, but but it's very different uh, rhythm to his writing. As a matter of fact, that uh, um, the translator uh, did a great job of translating that his style in Japanese, and uh, I could I could see, and uh, I I read like uh, um, South of Border. Uh, yes, East of the Sun. Uh, I think um, uh, I read that in, in English and I had opportunity to read it in Japanese, so I read in Japanese. And you know, the feeling I get from both of those, Japanese are faster for me to read, but anyway, um, uh, feeling I get is the same, exactly the same. His writing is transformed to to this particular style in English and the J. Rubin and uh, Philip Gabriel are those two translators. I love those people. Uh, very, very good translator. And, uh, but anyway, so I also had an opportunity to read um, Killing Commandatore in Japanese because when Killing Commandatore, which is the last fiction by him uh, today, 2020. Uh, I was very eager by the time I read all of his fiction, you know, so this is a new new uh, fiction published in Japan, it, uh, it became uh, more or less like a sensation, so, so I couldn't hardly wait, so I was uh, trying to look for a copy before the translation came up, and you know, uh, I live in uh, the suburb of Denver, and I think University of Denver has that copy of Japanese print, Japanese book of the Killing Commandatore. And I read that, okay, first. And then I read the, um, the English version after that. And it's pretty much the same. Both times I tremendously enjoyed it. And, um, so, uh, you know, his, um, why, why I get so, I think it's, it's, um, it's, uh, it's a, you know, somewhat like a very fantastical things happen all of a sudden, boom, you know, and like a cat start to speak to you and uh, wow, you know, I love cats and uh, well, I wish I could, you know, have a conversation with my cat. Uh, you know, so that exactly happens in a um, Kafka, uh, Kafka on the show, and so you know all this thing, fantastical thing, is fantastic, tremendously fantastic, and uh, the, his uh, more or less like uh, um, his interest um, in in the things that he writes, it's always somewhat. Um, lonely and uh, but he thrive in that loneliness he 
he like a king commandatory I think the guy goes like after a wife left him he goes like a one month or two months he travel all, all over the uh, Japan and uh, so forth and, and um, the, the wind up bird chronicles the guy after a wife wife and cats are uh, missing or left uh, he goes to the deep in the abundant well he goes in there and uh, I think meditation right meditating in, in there at the bottom of the well you know wow that, uh, that's w w what's happened you know and uh, uh, by the way this uh, going to the well is I think they're repeating a uh, killing commandatore had uh, uh, the same thing that he found this hole in the mountain and he has to go in there in the deep in the hole and uh, sit there for a while or something like that so it uh, has a, a more or less like a uh, philosophical kind of a attitude toward uh, life I would say why people live in the, you know why people commit suicide suicide um, I think it's common for his fictions um, you know like uh, Norwegian words um, suicide in Japan is very common topics so even today I uh, I go to this um, YouTube um, articles and sites uh, they talk about big casualty about suicide like I know this actress uh, very famous but committed suicide wow you know those those things I never hear in, in the United States for example you know of course that suicide happens in everywhere all over the world but I think in Japan it's uh, people are more or less like uh, live in the society who is very conformed and uh, more or less like repressed and uh, they don't have anywhere else to go because it's you know, Jap Japan is island country and they you know uh, restricted and um, but I think that's not uh, that's not the reason I would say the long traditions of uh, this uh, beautifying the uh, uh, you know, almost like a uh, death or, or the culture of the, uh, you know, the uh, like suffering and the culture of uh, sacrificing your own happiness to the others and you repress your feeling of, of love to someone or something like that. And that part, I don't like it. I don't like, I didn't like when I was there and I even today I don't like the particular um, repression even though I have a tremendous respect of the people who are uh, who um, who honor those the, the very uh, st stringent um, uh, taciturn uh, you know following the old traditional values and uh, you go through there um, I really uh, you know deep in my heart that's in my in my deep in my heart and uh, I, I tremendously respect the people who, who does it but at the same time I wasn't happy you know I every time I think about those things are fascinated but um, no it didn't didn't make me happy uh, therefore you know the, the Murakami is I think mainly influenced by the Western culture uh, just like myself you know he was listening to American jazz and uh, classical music and uh, so forth and uh, uh, I think he was his writing is pretty much uh, different from completely different from the most of the Japanese authors and very dry and very uh, I would say optimistic I would say um, you know the protagonist go through all these things dip, uh, the life difficulty and uh, but then again he this protagonist is very uh, taking it as a 
as a, a not for not suffering, but it's like a what as an experience in life, and uh, you know you 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 don't enjoy it, but you go through that particular difficult times, and uh, always I think Murakami's um, fiction is not sad at all, even though you know Norwegian would, for example. It's a sad story, but it's a lot, so lots of positivity in there. And Murakami, although he he lived in the U.S. for a while, or he lived in a uh, you know somewhere else in the uh, the, the outside the country, I think his uh, writing is also very very influenced by uh, I think American authors. I think I, I, what I understand is, but still that his sentiment is very Japanese, I would say, and so um, his uh, uh, topics of uh, um, su suicide, I think it comes up very often in his books, uh, but it's not like, a, a, you know, it's a bad way, it's, uh, it's like a, it, I would say it's like a, it's a matter-of-factly uh, type of thing, and uh, so I hardly Cannot, can, hardly can wait uh, uh, for his next uh, book, you know, um, and uh, uh, you know the Wind Up Bird Chronicle, one Q eighty four. I love that book. It's a uh, kind of a, a light. I would say it's a thick book, but it's very light uh, in a, a content. But it's a very romantic, and I love that book. Uh, the one thing I don't like, and I, I, I don't know, I should talk about uh, one thing that I don't like. But it's about um, his like uh, explicit depictions of uh, uh, some kind of a sexual behavior. And uh, I, no, that's what I, I even I don't like it. And I think some of the uh, anti Murakami people. Don't like that too, and uh, so. But anyway, he he continued that things there here and there. Uh, but I think Murakami uh, is um, very readable. His book is very much fun to read, and it's kind of a deep sometimes, and um, positivity. And I I like that, and so I really recommend you guys. Um, you know, especially young people. I think Murakami's book is very popular among the young people in Japan as well as uh, uh, other countries. Um, I think uh, you get a kick out of it and uh, you kind of are addicted to his book. And it's always uh, you learn something and uh, I think you feel like, uh, yeah, I enjoy the reading books. Uh, finally, right? <laughs> okay, you know, you know, people are busy and you, you don't have time to, to read books, but you know, I don't mind spending time reading his book.